today on Life Talks, we're going to be looking at fasting one more time as we have the previous two episodes because it's such an important and, and complex thing. And, and, you know, Ben, the last episode we did on this was We got into a lot of rabbit trails. We got into a lot of but rabbit trails. A, but I think it was good. I think, yeah, I think they, they were all the same breed of rabbit, at least. And so, <laughs> you know, it was, it, was interesting. it was interesting to make some of these connections. Uh, before have you ever eaten rabbit? Oh, yes. <laughs> I've never had a rabbit before. I haven't had a rabbit. You know, okay, you know, ask I, me if I've ever shot a rabbit and eaten it. Well, <laughs> well I think I've now. Shot, I've shot rabbits before. But you didn't eat them? Wait, Why? how That's dare horrible. you? <laughs> you? First of all, you rabbits, never shoot rabbits, something I don't are, eat. rabbits are the worst critter to, to destroy a, a garden. They will ravage Tell your garden. Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> so that's what I'm, say- <laughs> so I'm saying is I kill rabbits. I kill rabbits for my wife. Like, like, you know how it, <laughs> that explains her coat. You know, in, in the in the thir- this is the manliest in, in, thing in that the Ben thir- does. In the 13th century, men would slay dragons. And like, oh, right, I, right. I, I, I shall slay that bunny, bunny. for you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, honey, that's so wonderful. She just, I mean, it's like I'm, I'm oh, killing way, her dragon. By the way, I, I spoke prematurely the other day, and I said, I think I got all the squirrels. Oh no! They're Did you back. not? Uh, They're back. Oh, They're back. So rats. if you follow me on Facebook, watch. Watch my okay. uh, watch my feed because it's, but the squirrel war I, has I, begun I, I again. Go, I know we talk about rabbits, but but I've always since the days of Looney Tunes in my life with Bugs Bunny, I've always wanted to have Hassenpfeffer. Yeah, it's good. Remember, remember Hassenpfeffer. Remember that the, 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 there's a German. A, th- there was a cartoon, one of the cartoon episodes of I think it was Elmer Fudd or uh-huh. whatever. But there was this king that was like, I want. Hassenpfeffer. And he would, cl- and, and, and they was, so they're trying to kill Bugs I Bunny. And he kept that. wanting Hassenpfeffer. And I'm like, I, I want to have a Hassenpfeffer. <laughs> I've always wanted to eat Hassenpfeffer. Well, you've, you've been, been, to Germany, you've been to Germany. How many times? Why it's aren't like you a having Hassenpfeffer? Because when you go to Germany, I care about the schnitzels and the, and the versts and, and, and the, really it's the pastries. The what was, the was Verst. W U R S T. It's, it's sausages. It's the worst. It's the worst thing ever. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we went the same we way. Go there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyways. Yeah, so seriously, it's very, very good. I prefer it fried with gravy on it, but it is good. Deep fried or just fried? No, just just country fried. D- does it taste like chicken? Mm. Or does it have its own uniqueness? It has its own, it has its own u- uniqueness. The, the texture is different than chicken. Okay. Say. Interesting. Yeah. Does it taste weird? Does it taste no, good? It I good. find it fascinating. We're talking about food. <laughs> well, it, well it, as we're on this fasting. <laughs> funny story because you know I'm. <laughs> it might be our subconscious. <laughs> I I married the cityest girl. I mean, uh-huh. literally from Palm Beach, Florida, right? right. So I take her like back from the city. <laughs> yes, I couldn't get any city. And and so I take her back home one time. I take her to my aunt's house, and she's fixing this huge dinner for us, and it was wild turkey. Rabbit oh, and oh. quail that they had hunted and killed, and that was the whole dinner. And it was wonderful. I was so excited, you know. And my wife, she's she's politely nibbling and nibbling, and all of a sudden she goes, "There's something hard in here. There's something hard in here." I said, "We'll spit it out." It was a piece of buckshot. Oh, listen! <laughs> my wife Pull looks it. at me like, "What was that?" Yeah, so oh, it's, yeah. just, it's just some of the ammo. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember as a kid growing up that that was something because my, there was tons of hunters in my dad's church, and so they would go out and hunt all these deer, and so they would. But their wives hated cooking venison, so we literally, as a family, grew up on venison for yeah, the last two years, like from ages eight to ten. And I remember my. <laughs> It's sometimes like, be careful of the bullet. You might, <laughs> you might clamp down on something. So yeah, that, a that's little a, lead never hurt yeah, anybody. Yeah. Well, well, wait a minute. Okay. It does kill you. But anyway. all right. So all right. So let's we're get back, back to fasting. To fasting so, I gotta get through this. I, I mean, we have wasted. No, you don't. We can just do another episode. Flopper or whatever it was. Hassan Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> but you really should, seriously try it when you get a chance. Okay. It, it did, did you introduce that you're Dan and I'm Ben? No. Did you do that yet? My name is Dan. Okay. This is Ben. For the teaching pastors at Life yeah. Fellowship, and we're generally just nuts. we're we're finishing <laughs> up on fasting. And so, let, yeah, all right, so, so we're going to talk about how to practice fasting. Practice today. it. So, so let me finish up when you see the kinds of fasts in the Bible, because some people are like, "So what do I do?" They don't know where to start. Well, in the Bible, you have these lengths. Uh, you have examples of lengths of days that are given. The first one and most common one is one day. All right. Sometimes people do it sunrise to sun sunset. Um, some people do it for, I would say, a 36 hours. So, so missing a three three meal cycle of a of a day. So it's, but it's more than 24 hours because what you're doing is 
you're fasting from the dinner the night before and you're skipping an entire 24 hour period and then eating breakfast the next day. So it's almost like 40 hours. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, so you have one day. Which so you're is, basically skipping three meals. You're just skipping three meals. Um, then there's the three day fast. And the only time you see a three day fast in the Bible again is a complete or absolute fast. We talked about that last episode. You have a seven day fasting period. An example of that is First Samuel chapter thirty one, when they fast over the mourning. The, they're mourning the loss of Saul and Jonathan. So that's a seven day fast. You see a ten day fast uh, that Daniel does in Daniel chapter one. Um, that's when he does not eat the king's delicacies from from uh, from his table. You see a 14 day fast one time when Paul is on this boat and it's in a storm and they're desperate to survive the storm and they fast for 14 days. That would be the easiest fast for me because he's 14 probably days. Yeah, no, he was so seasick. You don't want to <laughs> I've been seasick. Let me tell you, eating was the last thing yeah, on my mind. Yeah. But anyway. But they fasted for 14 days. You see a 21 day fast uh which Daniel does in Daniel chapter 10 as he's seeking th there's both a morning but also a seeking of the Lord, um, and and again, it's a that's a partial fast. And then there's the forty day fast that you see Elijah, Moses, and Jesus do. So you can you, those are the those are the lengths of days that you see people do. Um, there's a great book that I would encourage everyone to read if you're going to do some. You can do, you can do a Bible study on fasting. It's not hard. There, it's not like it's a deep. Issue. It's not like you, you know, studying the word love in scripture. Right. Uh, it, it's it's something a study can wrap your arms around. But there's a great book I read a few years ago called God's Chosen Fast, and I can't remember the author's name, but God's Chosen Fast. It's just a little booklet, and it is a it is an excellent descriptor of why should we fast, what are the fasts in the Bible, how to do it, and on the, in the back of it is a journal entry of a man who went through a forty day fast. And it that to me, just that experience alone, the journal of the man's fasting experience was worth the price of the book. It was really, really cool. Um, so, anyways, those are. I just want to cover that before we get into. Okay, so how do you how do you fast? Because some yeah. people want to know. Arthur how, Wallace was the author. Arthur of Wallace. Yep. Thank you, Dan. Um, so, I think a lot of people ask the question: Should we even fast today? Hmm. Right, I mean, don't, don't I've, I have found that I think it was Richard Foster who wrote the book on spirit, celebrating the disciplines. Um, he said you cannot find a book on fasting for almost a hundred years, hmm. from like eighteen fifty something to nineteen fifty something. Hmm. In all in the in the English language, there is not one book published or printed that had to do with fasting. Isn't that interesting? That's fascinating. Huh. So, so I do believe that it it was lost for a season. It, it was a practice that was lost. I think for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think that some people saw that as a an abuse of the ascetics. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when when the people would deprive themselves, it's almost it was almost like people in the Protestant world viewed it as a Catholic thing, with the the monks and the monasteries and the nuns and all of these spiritual orders within the Catholic church. And so I think within the Protestant church, they saw the ascetic practices of self-denial and said, well, we're not, we don't want to have anything to do with that. There's these, and, and there have been ascetic abuses of, of people doing that. And, and people just thought that was weird. Then I think that there is also a view of maybe if, if, it felt like it's much more pronounced in the new, in the Old Testament than the New Testament. Doesn't mean that it's not in the New Testament. It's just not as pronounced. And sometimes you even have these negative sayings about fasting in the New Testament, like Jesus saying, "Hey, you know, don't fast when you fast. Don't do this." Or Paul in in Colossians chapter two saying, "These people that are fasting, but they're doing it, you know, kind of like downplaying this uh, this self discipline that is." That's abusing what the gospel's about. But on the other hand, you do see Paul fasting. You do see, he even mentions fasting as a practice. Uh, it's in 2 Corinthians, I think 2 Corinthians chapter 6. He talks about that there's this, as he's talking about the, the normal practices of the ministers of the gospel, he talks about fasting and fastings often. Okay. So, uh, but you see it much more pronounced. So I think some people view it as an Old Testament thing, not a New Testament thing. But I think that's because they don't have a complete picture of of the of the whole teaching of, of fasting in the Bible. Hmm. 
But I think really the third, and this is, I think, today, why don't people fast? And it's because we live in such an, a self-indulgent culture. Mm. I think predominantly people live in a, I I know what I want and I want it now, mm-hmm. right? And so there's this, um, I don't want to deprive myself of food because I love food and I worship food. And, and there's, food has a place in my life that is higher than God for many people. So I think that there's a, the self-indulgence keeps us from even considering fasting. And I, I think that's probably the number one reason why people don't fast. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. And, and and it's one of the reasons why, you know, I brought up the topic last time on identifying these little G gods that emerge yeah. in our life, whether it is food. But for me, food is the ultimate reset. Yeah. Because when I'm hungry, everything else pales. Oh. You know, you know, I'm I'm not interested in anything. I mean, we've created we quarter create, pounder we, with cheese, we've right? We created a word, and I don't know how when this word was first used, but hangry. Yes. Oh, when did I'm that familiar word with come? that word. I'm, I'm interested out. in when that word first word came, came into the vernacular, but it but, may have been at that Super Bowl ad. You remember when like Betty White and they would hand her a Snickers bar. Yeah. So you need, you yeah, yeah, hangry, yeah, but, 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 so but hangry bar. hangry is a word that is commonly used by most Americans today. Right, I'm hungry, and therefore I'm grumpy because I'm not getting what I want. Yeah, and by, by the way, there's a there, there is a biological reason for that because when your blood sugar drops, you become irrationally at times <laughs> angry. I ask my family. <laughs> I mean, I have experienced this when I've fasted before. Mm-hmm. I ha- I've had to go through. Okay, so in full disclosure, um, and I'm I'm please don't I'm not patting myself on the back, but fasting is a, is a practice I've incorporated over the last few years of my life. I would mm-hmm. say prior to 2021 wasn't there, but I've incorporated in my life recently. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I'm I'm thankful for it. But what I would tell you is there have been many times I have gone into a fast and I get hangry and I cut it short. Mm-hmm. I fail at the fast. Like I'm like, I'm not going to eat today. And then it gets to be about three in the afternoon and I'm grumpy and I'm mad. And, I'm, and all of a sudden I'm like, I'll eat something. And then all of a sudden I feel horrible. Mm-hmm. Like I could, I didn't commit to it. I, I, I fell. And so I think you have to, when you're going into a fast, you have to really say, you have to commit to it and say, I'm doing this and I'm doing this for God because you know, it's going to get tough. You know, you're going to get emotional in it. And if you don't. If, Maybe that's why a lot of fasts were done in isolation. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Because kind of if withdrew. you don't, because you have to, because in that moment, what will be tested in that moment, this is what I realized is because there have been other times when I have been hungry, but I'm so desperate for God to work and move. The hunger that I have pales in comparison for what I'm desiring from God. Mm. And so I think that's when those those emotions and those feelings are tested is when when I'm when I am hangry, when I am angry and I'm and I'm just wanting this my body to be satisfied with in my stomach. And all of a sudden, I will compromise the commitment that I made. Yeah. I think that that's a, and I, I'm just being honest. I have failed in that, yeah. in, in my life. And so, what I try to do is, when I go into it, be fully aware of what I'm. What, before I go in, what am I committing to? Am I committing to a 24 hour fast where I'm I'm skipping two meals, or am I committing to a full 40 hour fast? I'm missing three meals. Mm-hmm. So, so those are my two typical fasts. It, it, that that I, that I practice regularly. Yeah, and, and and having the right motivation behind the fast is important. By the way, fasting is is a fad now for weight loss. You know the the periodic oh, fasting totally. they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting. The, yeah, the, 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 the health benefits of fasting are. Yeah. are but that's what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. None of that counts as spiritual fast. You, you don't get two for the price of one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My doctor told me to intermittently fast, so so that's so I'll just start praying alongside of it. Like, <laughs> nope. That's not how it works. Yeah. But at the same time, if there is a health benefit for fasting um, or a weight loss benefit for fasting, I think there is a a, a moderation discipline mm-hmm. benefit from fasting as well and that we talked briefly about. Because I just think we say too little about this on the church. The average Christian's life is as full of little gods as is the typical Hindu. Oh. Mm. We just don't turn so ours true. into statues that we put on our mantles. That's really well said. And and we and and I and I'm guilty of this. I'm guilty of how much more time do I spend 
reading internet news and blogs and this this kind of stuff, then I spend in the word. How mm-hmm. m- I mean, how much more television do I watch than you you know than than is healthy? Uh, yeah. Just over and over and over again, I can see these little g gods that creep into my life, and they're not necessarily evil, yeah. but they're distracting. Yeah. And so fasting is a way, whether it's fasting from media or whatever, or fasting from food to reset. And I think all of us from time to time in our marriages and a lot of our relationships have to reset and yeah. say, who am I living for? Why am I living this way? And and so on. Yeah. Sure. So I've got a question. So if you're fasting, how do you know if you've been, let's say you're days into this fast and mm-hmm. you're, this is, this is harder than it's ever been for you. Mm-hmm. How do you know? Cause earlier you talked about for health reasons, sometimes people shouldn't do it. How do you know if there's a health issue or you're just really hungry? <laughs> like it's supposed to be happening. Like yeah. you can see people like kind of like even sort of lying to themselves. Like, you know what? This is probably, it doesn't feel very good for me. Like, like how do you work that out? <clears throat> so what I would say is, um, I remember the first couple times I fasted, I got physically ill. I got massive headaches. Mm. So what I would say is it's it's okay to work up into a full mm. fast. Don't j- just like just like we would never like talking about the spiritual fa- spiritual discipline of prayer. Mm-hmm. You know, it would be great if everyone prayed an hour a day. Okay? But not everyone's going to pray an hour a day because some people Barely pray two minutes when they pray. So, so if someone's starting out in prayer, you don't be like, well, "You need to get on your knees and pray for thir- for at least until you, for s- at least thirty minutes." No, start out and say, "Okay, I'm going to pray for five minutes." And once you pray for five minutes, try to move it to ten minutes and try to again. Not that it's about the legalistic, but it's what you're trying to do is build the spiritual muscle inside of you to be able to do it. I've had to learn that for fasting. I had to work my way up to the ability to fast regularly. So what I mean mm. by that is, um, and that what you mentioned is a good reminder that you don't just start off by saying, all right, I'm going all in. Right. Um, I think it's important to say, okay, I'm going to introduce this practice and I'm just going to, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to skip breakfast and use that time to pray. I'm going to do that mm. for a couple weeks. Not every day, but it's just like one day a week I'm going to do this and just kind of get my body used to this. Um, and maybe even do it on a on the on your committing a day. So even uh, you see this in Luke chapter 18 when when the tax collector and the Pharisee and the Pharisee is like, I fast twice a day, you know, whatever. He's 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 so proud and arrogant. And, and we know from history those were Wednesdays and Fridays. Now, the early church brought in that practice of fasting two days a week. It's mm. in the didache, didache, it's either way how you pronounce it, pronounce it, the didache or the dache, but it's the teachings of the early church. And so the early church took on that practice of Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, then eventually just became no meat on Fridays. No meat on Fridays. Except for fish. This yeah. is really nerdy, but it's pronounced didache. Didache. And the only reason I had to figure that out is because we said it in our course and we had to call oh, okay. a guy to be like, right. how do you say yeah. this word? And he's like, didache. Uh, so it's, it's did it, yeah, did a case. So Didn't have a nerd on the team. Thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> but the point is, there. John Wesley introduced this, and he would not ordain anyone in the Methodist Church until unless if they didn't practice fasting twice cool. a week. So, what I would say, if you're starting out, start with just skipping breakfast, then skip breakfast and lunch, yeah. and, and then and then and then you can you know you're going from you know kind of twelve hours to. 24 hours to 36 hours. You know, there's like these progressions you can yeah. work up to um, and and to make sure that you're, and the other thing I would say is if you're going to fast, drink lots of water. Hmm. When you're starting out, make sure your body is taking in the water that you you need because your body does need that kind of, um, it needs it to, to function properly. Don't don't let the sickness and the headaches distract you from the spiritual purposes. And so just understand you're going to have to work into it, just like right. you would work into, you know, couch to 5K, work into the yeah. practice of fasting. In So you're not just going, oh, I tried fasting and it was horrible. Yeah, we, because you needed to, to work into it. It's like a league of their own. The hard <laughs> is what makes it good. <laughs> I've got two questions I want to ask you before we're finished. We've got little over two minutes, so you're yeah. going to have to give me really succinct answers. Okay. Number one is 
I have heard repeatedly people who experienced some kind of breakthrough yeah. in fasting. Yeah. So the founder of this church had two 40 day fasts he used to talk about, and he mm-hmm. was the only guy I'd never known who'd done 40. Mm-hmm. And so in both of those cases, there was a spiritual breakthrough. He told me at the end of his last 40 day fast that he actually mourned, wept, felt sad that it was ending. It had to end, but he was, he was almost in grief that it did really help me understand is, is, is that an implication? I mean, I, I don't think we should always expect that, but is that, part of the supernatural experience that comes with fasting or is that just some off the wall anecdote i can't i can't talk to his experience i can i can tell you when i read so i can give you two anecdotal things one is when you read the book god's chosen fast he talks about that experience that there is there we talked about this in the very first episode there's a thinning of the veil Mm. i i will i will I, there was a period of time I fasted. I'm not going to tell you how many days I did it, but there was a period of time I fasted longer than was typical. And I can tell you that the longer that that period of time went on, the more in tune and the more pronounced I could hear God's voice. It was unbelievable. In, in, in so much that I can tell you that when I stopped it, there was a sadness to it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Because there was this, it's hard to describe the the unity your spirit and body feels with God. It's just unbelievable. But I think it's also you see this in the Word of God. You see this out played out in Jesus's fast, where Jesus goes into this fast, goes into this period of tempting with Satan, where when he talks to Satan, he is so in tune with. The word of God that when Jesus, when Satan talks to him, the only thing Jesus says is the is the Bible. Mm-hmm. He just spouts the Bible because his 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 whole body and mind and soul is so focused on man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Mm-hmm. There is something supernatural that takes place within our body and soul that cannot be described mm-hmm. and it cannot be measured. So what I would say is, but man, you, going back to the very beginning, you do this before God and you do this for God. He is the audience. You do this before him. God, I'm doing this before you and I'm doing this for you. Right. This is what Jesus talked about. You know, don't do it before people. Don't make it about your, you're manipulating God or you're trying to get people to think you're so great. This is a this is an act of worship and seeking and desperation and communion with God. Right. So did, 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 I, did that, I answer that? Yeah, it was uh, very insightful, and I wish we had another 20 minutes to unpack it because I, I, I think that's really revealing. I need to ask the last question. Okay. When are we to fast? When do we know where to fast? Is it, it is simply say, okay, it's the third week of the month. I'm going to fast on Wednesdays or Fridays yeah. like they said. Or is there is are there moments in time when we should turn to fasting or should we be listening for the Holy Spirit urging us to fast? How do we know when to fast? Yes. <laughs> That's not helpful. <laughs> yeah, I think I think there are, if you go back to the first episode, when how you see the people of God in Scripture, when they fast, that's when you should fast. I mean, all those different, we're, we're in danger, God help us. Uh, God, I'm desperate for you to, to, to save my, my son, you know. There's all these moments you see. I, I'm mourning my sin. I'm fasting. There's all these moments. The, the reasons for why we fast you find in Scripture. So when you find yourself in those moments, fast. Allow the Spirit of God. And and there should be a when we when we open the door to fasting. What we're saying is nothing's off the table. So if God calls me to fast, like I can remember the t- the, the last time God called me to a fast. Um, for a specific reason, and called my wife and I to a fast. It was for a very specific reason. We both felt like God was leading us to do something, and so we went into this together, and we saw God do an amazing work. And so, yeah, there's this. But I also think going back to like, for example, we're gonna be. I'm calling the church to fast for our next prayer night of prayer and worship. And the whole idea is, I'm not gonna tell you how to fast. I'm just t- asking you as the person who's a part of this church, let's go, let's be, let's be hungry before God to see God work and move. 
Like that, let's do that together. How that looks in your life, because I'm not going to ask you. Some of you, some people might have never fasted before, so I'm just going to say, "Hey, skip a meal." For some people, they're veterans of this, and so I'm going to say, "Skip a day." Right, right. Whatever fasting, whatever that, whatever that step of faith is for you to do, take that step of faith and exercise that step of faith before God and for God. And sometimes we can do that with each other. All right. The word hangry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the word hangry in conclusion. came with. Uh, ca- Came to be known in the 90s from a book, but it was popularized in 2015. It exploded. Suddenly, everyone was Googling for hangry memes all of a sudden. And so a linguist had an interesting observation about this word. He said, hangry is like the word schadenfreude in the sense that it is such a delightful word. Once you know it, you're like, I experience this all the time. <laughs> so then everyone just says it. It's so easy to jump on. And so hangry immediately That's blew so up. funny. Okay. So this episode was brought to you by the letter H. <laughs> send your emails. To... No, send your Snickers. <laughs> so, that is great. That all is right. Great. Well, it's been it's been uh, a, a wonderful review of, of fasting over these three episodes, and I hope that uh, we again have elicited thoughts uh, mm-hmm. for you to discuss with people in your life, with your family, with your spouse, and uh, and uh, continue, if you would, to send us your ideas and thoughts because that series did come from someone who listens to That's us right. regularly. So uh, please share us, if you would, on your social media. And until next time, thanks for joining us always at Life Talks. <laughs> <laughs>